Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Does Presents. I'm your host, Brent Butler, and tonight we have Ryan Hurd. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me, man. It's awesome having you. Um, we just heard you play a couple of your, your songs live here in the uh, Pop Does boardroom, so that was really cool of you. Yeah. Uh, you. Including To A T, which I believe is the latest single, is that accurate? Yeah, so To A T is a song I put out last year, and uh, we are going to radio with it um, in about three weeks. So it's, I don't know, it's really fun. I've, I've released kind of three singles in a row, and uh, it's, it's, To A T has been cool just because like my wife sings background vocals on it. It's really reacted with fans, and like, it's, it's a country song, but it's, it feels like it has a lot of different, you know, opportunities to get fans from other genres to come and listen to what we're doing. So it, I was really proud of that one. Your wife, does she also perform with you on tour? Uh, my wife is Maren Morris of Zed in the middle fame. So uh, she uh, comes out whenever she's around. She'll sing a little bit. But um, it must be a treat for fans that are like, because you both have like your own fan groups. I'm yeah. sure there's overlap. A treat for me too, because she's so good. Um, and that's how I got to know each other was through writing songs in Nashville, and uh, we both kind of moved there to write songs for other artists, and have uh, done that to like varying degrees. And um, you know, she made an incredible record and won a Grammy, and I am like kind of stuck. Like somehow I'm doing an artist project now too, and a little bit, uh, you know, it, it's been really cool to like get to still create with her, and um, it's a uh, but yeah, two T's like. It's, it's just really fun whenever she puts her vocal on something because it's she's incredible, but also like it always just kind of reminds me of the way we got together. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's the cool thing I think is like as you know our genres grown, and we've had opportunities to like have songs like To a T, like reach out and, and grab like listeners who maybe wouldn't think of themselves as country fans. That's awesome, and and country is a, a giant genre, you know, especially. In the U.S., um, so we've we've been lucky to have uh, some big and, and rising country stars on the show, and it's always it's always cool because it's a little bit different. I mean, I know everybody thinks the New York City is like the home of country music, but not as much as you'd expect. <laughs> you don't hear a bunch of it. It's funny though because I think people think of country music as a like a specifically southern thing. Yeah, and it is really interesting that like this is our number two radio market in the country. Is yeah. New York City and like Chicago is probably our number one radio market, and like so many people from the Midwest are country music fans, and even the West Coast is is, is wild sometimes. So uh, I mean, it's it really is like. It's a it's a very national, even global genre at this point. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, even like California and stuff. You said uh, you're hitting radio with the new single. Are there any plans coming up or any tours? I know that you just sold out a lot of dates recently. New York City, L.A., yeah. and Chicago, I think sold out. Um, are you doing more touring or? Yeah, uh, it's really weird. I, I've never gotten to play my own show. I've just opened up for other people, and this year we decided we were gonna kind of step out and see what would happen if we booked some dates with me as the headliner. And so we booked some really fun clubs. We did Troubadour in LA and Bowery Ballroom here. And uh, you know, Joe's uh, on the lead in Chicago and then Exit In, which is like our like probably most historic rock club. And uh, all of those dates sold out, which is really cool. You don't really know you have any fans until something like that happens. And then um, I didn't play at all last year, really. Like I. I kind of got off the road for about a year and played some international festivals, but no, like, nothing in the U.S., and so it's cool to, like, come back and, like, start playing again and see, like, people really do what we're doing. What's the main difference when you're playing your music internationally as opposed to the U.S., <coughs> other than the language that the people are talking to? <laughs> I play mostly in London, so... Oh, okay. It's pretty... Uh, the I don't know. I feel like people love American music, and so they're obviously, like, most of like global music that's popular is coming from our country so any I think people are much more appreciative not in a way that I don't mean to dog like American fans but like people are so excited about American tours overseas that like it makes it makes the shows they just feel a little bit they have such a different energy like London and like the UK is such a listening crowd interesting it's not quite as rowdy uh -huh. um, and then like I know that people say that like Australia is probably the rowdiest crowd you'll ever have. So for like what we do, and, um, it's just I think people just really do get really excited about artists from 
any genre in America coming into an overseas zone? I think that I feel like Australia would have a, a good country crowd. That place is. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah, it's just massive. I've never been. No, but someday. I was just oh, okay. as an example to which I have no firsthand knowledge. Ah, so well, Australia. If you're maybe, watching, and I know you are, I'm saying nice Ryan. things. I don't know. Maybe I'll go down there someday. And you can uh, figure out if his theory on on rowdiness is uh, is correct. <laughs> I like that. That, that was that, probably a terrible. <laughs> By the way, I've never done that. <laughs> By the yeah. way, I've never, I've never been to Australia. We should probably talk more about it. Um, so where are your favorite places in Australia? Uh, Melbourne, I think. I hear great things. Yeah. So that's got but to Sydney stop. is another name of a place. Sydney is a place that I know exists as well. Um, <laughs> and then other than that, the Outback. Outback. Excellent steakhouse. Excellent steakhouse. So their cuisine. I'm exotic and uh, delectable. They have this. They have a different kind of onion down there. The bloom blooming onion. onion. Blooming it's, onion. It's delicious. <laughs> yes. So I, I've had that. And the is that different than the awesome blossom? That's that's chilies. Yes. Yeah, awesome blossom has. That's a, from the other part of the. That's from Chile. Chile. <laughs> yes. The Chilean um, blossom. Yes. The Chilean onion. The awesome. Yeah. The yeah. The onion dish. Oh man. It's awesome blossom. Also onion. It is. It's the same. It's thing. also Boston, also I mean. What's that? Like yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking about your song about wishing. Okay. Um, you had a line in there about coffee. Yeah. This like put a bunch of stuff in this song called "Wish for the World" that I wrote, and uh, it's kind of like a prayer. But I just listed a bunch of stuff that I like. I want to do more of those things. Is that that's the songwriting is? We just <laughs> I just made it good songwriting. Yeah, I think that's great. Like more coffee. Well, like, it's very positive. When you're sorry, you should say it. Uh, what I else is in there? Spring break is awesome. Yeah. Summertime is awesome. We should do that more. We should. Honestly, like we did this whole winter thing, like try it out, and you're not even done. Nobody goes on like you know you know you can't you can't party. In the winter, it hurts. And <laughs> it hurts. Yeah, it's like nature's punishment. Yeah. The other Earth. night. Tornadoes. <laughs> Midtown tornadoes. <laughs> this sec. This this when tourists run in circles around you really quick. You get sucked up. <laughs> Midtown tornadoes, man. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I like I like that song though because a lot of these things are very relatable, just things that you really like. And when when you're talking about like wish for the world, I almost start thinking about like a John Lennon's like Imagine or something, which is a lot loftier, big ideas. And you're like, I would just like some more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I like it when my TV shows come on that are good. Sure. Would you ever want to be on a TV show? I don't think so, man. That looks like a lot of work. I would just shoot like music videos every once in a while, and like I always think about like when I'm like filming those, like what what would it be like to do this for like 18 hours a day? Yeah, and it is intense. It just would be like, man, I, I think it's just too slow moving, like setups and all the stuff. Even this small set, we've been this, literally 48 hours. Very setup. slow, very slow moving set. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and this is painful for me, like the experience is just nauseating. I don't know if you feel that, but it's um, the worst. I'm not having any fun, you're right. I feel it's like I'm being stabbed it's all good. over my face. Yeah, with a ski pole. Yeah, with a ski pole. Um, what is a message for the fans out there or people that are maybe just discovering you now? Um, from yeah, this? Nothing. That was a really fun time hanging with you though. Thank yeah, you for super fun. Thank you for letting me come on uh, on your show. Uh, thank you for being here. Is there uh, a release coming out that maybe they should know about? Or? Uh, well, we're just uh, putting more tour dates out uh, in the next couple weeks, and so uh, look out for those. You can see them on uh, my website, ryanherd.com, or on Instagram, at ryanherd. So all those things are, are I'm looking forward to. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here on, uh, on Pop Dust. Everybody watching, please check out Ryan Hurd, subscribe to us, click your notifications bell, and uh, tweet, tweet us more questions for Ryan. You know? Thanks. Thanks.